Hey there guys, Phil Johnson here. Um, I got my rotary uh, set up on my 80 watt red and black laser all figured out and set up. Uh, I want to go over some tips and some things that I found that that uh, I had to discover on my own that weren't readily available in any one video. Um, so let's get started. First off, the most important thing is figuring out your gear ratio in these. Uh, plain and simple, there's a couple things you'll need to know. One is on the stepper motors inside here, uh, you'll see the silk screening and the dip switches. What you got to do is figure out what steps or pulses per uh, rotation uh, you're at. So basically, uh, how many steps per rotation uh, for the stepper motor itself. So that's number one. Mine is set to 5,000. Okay, number two, the other two numbers you're going to need to know are how many teeth. You don't want to measure the diameter of these pulleys. That's not a really good indicator of the ratio, the gear ratio. You want to measure the, or count the teeth. And how I did that was I actually uh, put a mark on one tooth and then I started rotating it and counted the teeth as I went around. Um, and then the same thing on the driven gears. This one was a 20 tooth, these were 12 tooth. Okay, um, that is step one to figuring out uh, your settings in light burn. Okay, now let me show you this guy too. Uh, this guy, this MW laser, awesome stuff. Okay. Uh, I did use, I bought his upgrade guide, it was four bucks, I think it was well worth it. Um, I also watched his videos. I'll tell you right away that a couple of the settings, even though it looks like we have similar lasers, a couple of the settings were not correct for my laser, um, but that's going to happen, I mean, each each of these Chinese manufacturers are going to make stuff just a slight, slightly different. Um, I know he said he was willing to help people if they get uh, tripped up on anything. Uh, I just did it on my own from my knowledge. Alright, so I also used uh, a spreadsheet of his or, or a screenshot of one to help me figure it out. Um, so the other piece of information you're going to need too is you're going to have to measure the outside diameter of the rollers. Now if you saw, I used silicone bands on my gnarled uh, uh, aluminum rollers or steel rollers uh, for grip on glassware. Um, you're going to want to measure the outside of that. So um, this here was set up in millimeters, okay? So you just have to convert it into inches if you're using inches in light burn. But uh, plain and simple, here we have the gear ratio, okay? Gear ratio, mine was the, the 20 and the 12, which equals 0.6. Um, and here we have the steps uh, per rotation. So over in Lightburn, okay, there is a section under, uh, let's see, edit, machine settings. Um, there's actually the rotary... Uh, the rotary parameters, okay. Uh, 3000 right here is just the, my gear ratio multiplied by the steps per rotation. Okay, and that gave me my steps per, pulses per relate, rotation or steps per rotation uh, for the rotary drive itself. And then the other one is the diameter. Now again, my controller is all in millimeters, so you just have to enter it in millimeters. Um, you get those two things correct, and the only thing you have to worry about in uh, light burn when you're doing a project is making sure that your project doesn't go uh, beyond the diameter or the uh, the circumference of the uh, of the project or of the piece itself. Uh, another quick tip uh, for rotary drives 
uh, is something I was just playing with here. Job origin. You, use, you have uh, user origin and job origin. Now my job origin right here is set to right by the J of the JoJo. This was for my daughter. I was just testing that out. Uh, we, I actually engraved that on a glass, uh, which was kind of cool. So uh, what we do is we have the job origin set to the center of the graphic, okay? And then the start from point is the user origin. So on, on the... Uh, the control here, the controller, the Ruida controller, um, you just hit the origin button when you got that pointer shown where you want it, and that's where it lines up. Now what I did is I put a pulse on it, uh, and you can see that little dot to the right of the J. Uh, that was the pulse, and I just wanted to test to see if it would indeed rotate right back and start right where I wanted and that's exactly where it is on the software. So the, the thing is, is when you set it up this way where all you're using is your gear ratio and the diameter of these guys, no matter what size object you put on here, the surface, the surface of this will rotate at the correct uh, speed because no matter how big of an object you're you're putting on there these are the thing that it's calculating to the surface of these which is going against the surface of this exactly and it will just rotate at the same speed no matter how big the object is the only difference is you have to set the z height to the surface of the uh, rotating object and the bigger the object the more uh, y direction space you have to put a graphic okay so and then right here is the origin button so you click that and you just run over here let's say your air is on your vacuum is on uh, and the lid is closed and from here as long as you have your settings set up correctly here you hit start and it will start exactly where you want it uh, one other thing that I saw um, let's see, where was that? The difference between, uh, the MW Laser Guys settings and what I found is making sure that the, the X acceleration, okay, his X acceleration was a little low. Okay, I put it up to 5,000. I think he had his at 3,000. Uh, and it seems to uh, definitely uh, speed it up a bit. So I got to still play with it. I see some other 3,000s. I don't know if they got a boost up. Uh, there's so many darn acceleration uh, uh, numbers here. Uh, but play around with the acceleration, get it so it goes fast, but it does not distort the image. Uh, I, know, I know on my old Top Wisdom controller, the uh, acceleration they had on there, it was actually distorting the image, making it wider than it should have been um, when running a project. Well, anyways, so those are the couple tips that I found that are really helpful when setting up your uh, your rotary with one of these. So, oh, another thing too, uh, in his video he showed uh, underneath the uh, gear, the settings thing here, uh, show rotary enable on main, okay? And then when you are using your rotary, enable it. Because it actually does pull the information, uh, even though it's still sending it through the Y axis, it still does use these parameters. And what I did was I saved the settings when I uh, when I was using before I set any of this stuff up. I did save and I said uh, uh, default settings, and then once I set this up for the rotary. I saved it again and I called it rotary settings. So all I got to do is go here 
and load either my default laser settings or rotary setup uh, in order to switch back and forth quickly. Remember to hit right after you do. So that's it. That's my uh, my little help guide.